Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to compare PyQt versus PySide. These two are very, very popular Python libraries for building these graphical user interfaces or GUIs. So they are technically based on the same thing, therefore they have tons of similarities, but they also have some differences. So in this video, I will cover what makes them similar, what makes them different, and how you can choose between the two or what you should think of when trying to choose. I will also talk about some differences in the licensing, what it would cost to distribute and release an application with either of these libraries, so stay tuned for that. So. First of all, what is Qt in and of itself? So Qt is actually a C++ GUI framework. So it was built for the purpose of building graphical user interfaces with C++. These interfaces are cross-platform, so they can run on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. And of course, this Qt framework also has different tools that you can use with it, such as the Qt designer or the Qt creator. Now, what's the difference between these two? So the Qt designer is actually an, a software or an app that you can use to design your interfaces using a drag and drop methodology. So you would design your UI, which is the interface that your user will be seeing when they launch the application. You design it simply by dragging and dropping different widgets, such as buttons, labels, things like that, onto the screen. And this is how you build it manually without having to write the code. Meanwhile, Qt Creator is a fully fledged IDE or an integrated development environment. So you can actually build the GUI, but you also have a code editor and other things that you can use, other tools that make your Qt development much faster and much better. So you can use both of these tools with the Qt framework, and it's part of what makes it such a successful framework and a very popular one as well. So this is all talking about the original Qt and C++. Now moving over to Python. Let's talk about some history regarding PyQt and PySide to better understand the difference between the two. So PyQt was built by a company called Riverbank Computing as a Python binding for Qt. So this is how you're able to use Qt with Python using this PyQt framework or library. So it was built by this company. However, this company is not the one that actually owned Qt at the start. So at the time, Nokia actually owned Qt and they wanted their own Python binding for Qt. So because they wanted an alternative for PyQt, they went ahead and developed one themselves, which is now known as PySide. So this is their own version of a Python binding for Qt. Now, why does PyQt still exist then? Why is it still so popular? Well, actually, PySide development kind of was somewhat slower. So they did lag behind a lot, especially with the release of Qt5. So PyQt5 came out a long time before PySide 2 was able to come out. So PySide 2 also works with Qt5, and so does PyQt5. So PyQt5 was much faster and it released way earlier. However, now with Qt6, they kind of released at the same time. So they are catching up and that's why now they're both very popular alternatives for developers. Now, the code, when writing code with PySide or with PyQt5, a lot of the code is very similar and almost identical. At the end of the day, they are based on pretty much the same framework, so a lot of the code looks exactly the same and is very easy to migrate between the two. So this is something to keep in mind that when or if you'd make a decision between the two, it doesn't have to be a final permanent decision as migration can be pretty easy and you can apply a lot of the code in both of the frameworks. So you're still thinking, okay, how do I choose between the two? If the code is very similar and they both are on top of Qt for Python, how do I choose between the two? The major difference between the two is actually in the licensing. So each of them sits under a different license. So PyQt uses the GPL license and PySide is licensed under the LGPL license. And what is the difference? So with the GPL license, what this license actually says is that you must share the source code to your users for your app so that you're able to actually release it for free. So you can't give away an app for free without actually sharing the source code with your users. This is a necessity, it's a requirement. So you can't go ahead and build an app with PyQt and sell it or distribute it as paid software without actually sharing the source code. For some people, this isn't a deal, deal breaker. So they don't mind, they will release an app, release the source code, make it public or make it public just to the users, and then they will be able to sell it, which is totally fine. 
However, if you do want to keep your code closed source, then you don't really have to share the source code. You'd actually go ahead and buy a commercial license. So you would have to pay money to actually keep your code closed source and be able to use your app in a commercial setting. Now, on the other hand, with PySide, since they use the LGPL license, you are actually allowed to use it in your software without having to share any of the source code. So you can create a commercial application for sale for a business without having to share the source code. You can keep the code private and you can share it with no issue. Of course, you can still go ahead with PyQt and actually use it release it and still share the source code and it would still be free. So you have two options to actually have a free application. Of course, you also have the paid option with PyQt, but anyways, you have two free options. So it's actually a myth that PyQt is not free. It is, but you have to release your source code. So it's free under a certain condition. So this is the difference in licenses and this should affect your decision when you're trying to choose between the two frameworks. So which one to choose at the end of the day? The final answer is it depends. As always with these types of videos, I can never give you a straightforward answer because it will ultimately depend on your needs and your certain criteria. So it depends. Now, one thing that makes this decision much easier is like I said before, it's not totally permanent. It's very easy to migrate code between the two because the code is virtually almost identical. Of course, there are some differences. However, you should be aware of them regardless, and then you'll be able to migrate your code between the two frameworks. So at the end of the day, it's your choice as a developer. So we've come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this gave you some information about the difference between these two frameworks and some insight into how you can choose between using the two. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.